Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Are we all just a bunch of idiots here on the internet and we think that this XRP thing, it's gonna result in us achieving life-changing wealth, but we're actually just a bunch of idiot sticks and it's gonna go to zero and we've just wrecked our, our financial lives? Hey, what do you think's most probable? Well, I, I'm here to tell you that uh, it's not just us crazy folks here in the XRP community that thinks think this makes sense. In fact, there's a well-known individual in the world of crypto, his name is Rao Paul. He's got about a million followers on social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter. Formerly a Goldman Sachs executive. And he said, and this is a quote that XRP is, quote, the opportunity of a lifetime, end quote. So no, it's not just us crazy folks here in the XRP community. Lots of people with an actual career in finance, decades long experience, very optimistic. I mean, to call it, you know, opportunity of a lifetime, I just, I sufficiently agree with that. <laughs> I, I don't think that's overstating it. For, for a lot of people, I, I firmly believe it will result in that. Um, there was that, and then there's also um, this headline, and they're covering perspective from him also with this one from the crypto base here. Will XRP ever decouple from Bitcoin? Market, market veteran Rao Paul weighs in. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Now, I, I do want to say here, before we get into some of the specifics of this content, you know, if you're familiar with Rao Paul, regardless of whether or not you broadly agree or disagree with his perspective here, I will say that uh, he's one of the guys out there who I find to be incredibly intellectually honest which I wish wasn't so rare, but it is the case. And by the way, this is this is coming from a guy, what you're about to hear from Rob Paul, it's coming from a guy who was in from this way, way, way early on. And he built up quite a large following of Bitcoiners, with a lot of those people obviously being uh, Bitcoin maxis. And so as Rob Paul did what, I mean, reasonable people like you and I have done as time passed, you know, you look at other coins as he did that, um, he just, uh, he, let's just say that he lost some fans, okay? He lost some of those toxic Bitcoin max control. He lost them as fans. And um, and I, I've seen a lot of the vitriol in comments, and he just, he stands by what he's doing. He has this attitude of, I'll not be told uh, what I can purchase, what I can research, what I can look into. And he doesn't think that uh, the, the whole, you know, uh, maximalism arguments, all the tribes, he, he's, he doesn't think any of that's reasonable or good quite clearly. And so he did come around despite all the attacks. He could have just tried to, you know, uh, placate his audience. You know, he could have just said, oh, yeah, I'm speaking trying to stick with that. But he, that's, that's not the type of person he is. If he thinks XRP makes sense, he's going to say it. And he does think it makes sense. So anyway, check this out. Earlier this week, a crucial conversation concerning cryptocurrency, particularly XRP, gained attention. In a notable interview, attorney John Deaton engaged with Rao Paul, a former Goldman Sachs executive and now CEO and co-founder of Real Vision. They explored the future trajectories of the crypto industry. Yeah, I'll, I'll pause and note here, folks. I watched that whole video, and if you have time, definitely check it out. It's on John Deaton's Crypto Law channel. Uh, it, it, just, it was a lot of fun seeing those two together. But anyway, peace continues. This enlightening dialogue was made accessible online by Crypto Law TV's YouTube channel. A key takeaway involves Rao Paul's confidence in logical approach to navigating the turbulent crypto market. He emphasized the importance of a vibrant community and real-world applications for cryptocurrencies. Paul's strategy involves investing in assets with tangible utility, regardless of market crises. This is also the reason why he bought XRP when everyone else was selling it, amidst the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple. I have also highlighted this update in my recent tweet as shown below. And so this is the author Colin Brown now sharing one of his posts on X, which reads as follows. Hashtag Goldman Sachs executive Rao Paul makes a bold move. He's going all in on XRP, calling it the opportunity of a lifetime. Rao Paul is betting big on XRP. He sees Ripple's real world utility and a vibrant community. End quote. Furthermore, he emphasizes that Ripple and XRP have significant utility and are poised to capture trillion-dollar markets by providing access to financial services for millions of people. And so, folks, it's, it's, it should sound like the biggest no-brainer comment, but not enough people in crypto, broadly speaking, sufficiently appreciate this. But in the end, it's just it's, it's utility matters and will win the day. 
If a coin's doing stuff for people and businesses, bam, that's where the money's ultimately going to flow. And we're in, uh, you know, we're not in a sufficiently mature market, so that it's not perfectly efficient and it's not happening all in a moment. But isn't shouldn't that just be the most no-brainer, non-controversial statement ever? I think so. And and so clearly, XRP actually has real-world utility. Why would it not just be worth way, way, way more in the future? Anyway, piece continues. XRP is set to outperform, outperform many of its competitors in the near future. Powell called XRP an opportunity of a lifetime. And here's the exact quote. This is the money shot right here. When you see something like that, it's like, okay, now the price has been massively discounted. We know it's a real thing. Half the people have been shut out of the market. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. So that's when I bought it, and I've held it ever since. Yeah, no, so uh, I'll note, when XRP in 2021 was about a dollar, um, he stated that he expects the XRP is probably going to go about 10 times higher than that. So he's thinking $10 XRP is perfectly reasonable. And I can't say I dispute that. I don't make any price predictions and I don't pretend to know, but it doesn't sound crazy. Definitely doesn't sound crazy. Peace continues. Interestingly, John Deaton disclosed his decision to invest in XRP following the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission suing Ripple, alleging that XRP was an unregistered security. Viewing this as a lifetime opportunity, he capitalized on the lower prices and has maintained his investment since. Deaton's stance underscores the potential he sees in XRP even amidst legal challenges. And that is one of the things that Attorney Deaton said in, that, uh, in his conversation with Rob Paul. He, had, he already owned XRP before the lawsuit. But then after the lawsuit, price went down, he bought more. He, was, he, he had stronger conviction. Um, th then there's this idea, though. When the couple, Right. Um, so there's a separate article from the Crypto Basic talking about this very topic, and they cover other stuff in this article. I'm going to go straight to this part because it's what I wanted to touch on, because uh, they have this little subheading here, Can XRP Decouple from Bitcoin? And you might be a little surprised by Rob Paul's answer on this. So this is from the same conversation, again, with, with Attorney John Deaton. And uh, anyway, piece reads as follows. Uh, Deaton asked Paul about the potential for XRP and other tokens to break free from the Bitcoin influence. Paul noted that such a decoupling would not occur. He emphasized that the Bitcoin cycle serves as the macro cycle, affecting all assets in the market. Paul argued that this phenomenon is deeply rooted in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis, where interest rates were reset to zero, prompting major governments worldwide to issue their debt in a consistent three to five year sector. This debt refinancing cycle, according to Paul, is the driving force behind the movements of Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and other assets. Paul suggested that the combination of the four-year cycle, uh, market cycle, economic fluctuations, and interest rate creates a synchronized environment where various assets, including XRP and, and other altcoins, move in unison. Okay, uh, fair enough th thing to state there. Uh, but look, asset classes, you can, you can argue that, broadly speaking, you do see... Um, you know, a certain amount of consistency directionally. So you can talk about what's happening when it comes to equities or you know, precious metals or crypto. And so if the argument is that you're still going to see, broadly speaking, directionally in times of broad macroeconomic health, if, you're, if, you're expect, if, if your argument is, yes, you're going to concede, continue to see stuff move in tandem, that's not crazy. So what I'm thinking, based on what I, and I would love to have a chance to ask him this question, I'm guessing, and I don't know this for sure, that when he's talking about decoupling, he's talking about something different. That's what it sounds like to me. Because I do believe that as the asset class continues to mature, you're going to see individual cryptocurrencies uh, judged on their own merits. Are they actually useful? Is there utility? And we have seen this progression. Whereas in 2017, like nine out of 10 cryptos popped off and, and just melted faces. It's it crazy. If you were here in late 2017, you know what it was like. But then uh, the number of coins that popped off uh, in 2021, the last market cycle, way fewer than that. I remember what it was, but it was it was way fewer than that. And so I, to me, that just shows some maturation here. And I think increasingly you will see those cryptocurrencies that solve problems. That's where the money is going to flow. We have over 20,000 different cryptocurrencies. They don't all need to exist, obviously, right? So if, if you're talking about individual runs for, for coins based on merit increasingly as time passes, I still think that makes sense. But if you're talking about something else and calling it, you know, um, you're saying that it has to do with specifically with the, with the you know XRP decoupling from Bitcoin. It just seems to me like a different, almost in a way like a different topic is being discussed practically. 
and we're just talking about it being coupled. But that's because it's not uncommon to because like even like in years where the where the where, where the stock market's hot broadly speaking. I mean, yeah, you could just be like, here's the S&P 500. Look at what it's doing. So it seems like almost everything's going up. But of course, it's not literally true. You can dive in and look at some crap companies and there will be stocks that absolutely tanked. What I'm saying is my 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 expectation is that increasingly that's what uh, that's what crypto is going to look like. So, yes, there will be hot years. I'm not saying that's going to cease to exist. But will coins increasingly be judged on their own merits? I think yes. I, I, I mean, it's very clear to me, like we've already been seeing that shift. I've been in, in the, 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 the space over six years now. It's, it's happened <laughs> quite a bit to that direction, just in the, the little time I've been here. So I think we're just going to continue to see that. So I'm not saying that what Rob Paul is saying is wrong. I'm just adding additional thoughts to this. But um, if I'm understanding him correctly, and I think I am, then he's just more broadly speaking, that's the way that I'd word it, not him, is it's just like you're talking about individual asset classes moving together, you know, and, and risk on assets getting treated in a particular way. But that doesn't mean that XRP can't blow like blow way f- past where Bitcoin is, and even in terms of market cap. What the hell is Bitcoin going to be number one in market cap forever? Maybe. I I, I don't rule anything out I mean, <laughs> when it comes to that concept, though. Um, but, but and and yes, even though it's true that XRP has always needed Bitcoin to hit a new all time high before XRP hits a new all time high, I don't know if that's always going to be the case either. It just has been to this point, but the asset class has been pretty immature for its existence and just edging closer to maturity. So yes, I would expect some more behaviors like that as we continue to inch closer to that direction. That, that's all I'm saying here. Anyway, really cool stuff there. So um, if, again, like I said at the other day, if you've ever wondered, are you being an idiot stick holding XRP? Well, people, again, <laughs> who have um, you know decades-long careers in, in, in finance, Former Goldman Sachs is out here, Rob Hall, thinks that XRP is going to be 10 bucks at some point in the future. He doesn't think that's crazy. And he called it the opportunity of a lifetime. And I can't, uh, can't disagree with that. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.